Most people have access to creating images with ChatGPT, but only about 20% of people understand its complete and full capabilities that you can actually do with this incredible tool. People get shiny object syndrome. They see a new AI image tool and they go, oh, that'll solve all the problems that I'm having. In reality, it won't. What will solve your issues is learning how to use the tool you've got access to correctly. So let's get rid of that shiny object syndrome. In this video, I'm gonna show you the complete capabilities of GPT images so that you don't go and pay for an unnecessary AI tool. If you're new here, my name is Nico. We run an online community called AI Ranking where we help support and teach Small business owners and agency owners rank their business number one, getting them organic traffic that ranks using some of the tools and strategies that I'm gonna show you today. Let's get started. Within ChatGPT, there's two ways really you can access the images. You can ask GPT straight in the chat, hey, generate an image of this. Or you can go to tools and select the generate image. These days, you can also select the style that you want it in, which is fun, but I don't think this is actually too useful. The first thing that we're going to learn is how to reverse engineer an image. I think one of the best ways to use this tool is to pick a style of an image that you like and understand how the AI sees this image so you can replicate the style or anything you want from that image later on. Let me show you how to do this and I think it's one of the most important tools to understand not only with this image generation tool but with most of them. Let's say I want to capture a similar feeling of this image here. I'm gonna copy it. This is directly out of Instagram. Take a screenshot. I'm gonna give it to ChatGPT. And I've got a prompt prepared that we're gonna go through so you understand what I'm actually asking it to do. And this became popular a couple of weeks ago, at least as of the time of this recording. What we're asking the GPT to do is to analyze the image and describe the image, but in a JSON format. You wanna speak in a language that the AI image generator understands and it best understands a JSON format. I'll leave the prompt below so you guys can have it. I'm gonna hit enter and it should analyze it and give me a JSON response. It's gonna look a little bit like code. Don't worry, but I'm gonna show you why it's so damn useful in a second. So here it's given me all the image components and descriptions that I don't know because I'm not a photographer. For example, photography techniques such as lighting, the description, the composition, the depth of field, sharpness, graininess, and all these other things. Perfect, I'm gonna copy this code. Let's go to a new chat. I'm gonna generate, uh, click the generate image and just gonna paste that JSON code that the GPT gave me, I'm gonna hit enter. Now obviously it won't be the exact image that we saw in Instagram, but it's going to hopefully capture a lot of the essence and at least get the wording right. What we really wanna look for is introducing the classic sling, maybe the person looking somewhat the same and at least having the sling in the denim jacket or the denim clothes. Now with the first generation, it got somewhat close to it. There's the image, it's got introducing classic sling. If we look at the image, it says introduce a classic sling, so I got that right. The actual subject is a little bit different, but that's okay. We can probably go to the JSON file and make sure that we make that uh, description of the actual person itself a little bit more uh, defined. However, I wanna go through a couple of other things here. When I've got the image selected, so I'm just gonna click out here, this is the normal chat, I'm gonna press on the image. You've got a couple of capabilities here. One of my favorite is this one here. So I can edit the things that I want to edit from the image. So let's say, you know what, I actually wanna change the sling to be color orange. So I'm gonna select items here and this little section here, and I'm gonna say, make the color of the sling and the strap orange. Very natural language, hit enter and it should only change that component of the image. So now it's made the strap a little bit bigger than I wanted to, but I can go through that, but it's made it orange and that's the only thing that has changed of that image, so thumbs up. Now, the other thing that we can do is grab this file here, which was the JSON file that was describing the image, right? We're gonna copy that into the same chat and we're just gonna change one thing. So instead of saying introducing the classic sling, we're gonna say introducing AI ranking, for example. So all I gotta do is in the JSON code, find where I've got the subheading here, introducing AI ranking, and the rest should stay the same. I'm gonna hit enter, and we'll take a look at the new generation of that image. So now introducing AI ranking, classic sling, not too bad. So we know how to reverse engineer an image and edit it within ChatGPT. Images, the next thing is to create a 3D logo. I use this all the time with a lot of my thumbnails. So 
Let's grab the trusty Instagram logo and we're gonna turn it into a bit of a 3D logo without any background. This is a one and two because I think understanding that you can generate images without background is also very, very helpful. So we're gonna start a brand new chat. I'm gonna paste the logo of Instagram, something that we all kind of recognize and I'm gonna ask it to turn this into a 3D logo slightly on an angle so I can see that it's 3D and make sure it's got a transparent background. Very simple prompt, but very useful. These are elements that you can start generating into your thumbnails and other things, which we'll get to in a second as well. And here is our 3D generated image without a background. I know this seems very simple, but I think it's actually very useful. You can create elements for your website, floating elements, or a lot of things as well. I just really like how simple this thing is. And if I download this now and take a look at it, you can see that it is in fact, a 3D image or looking image without a with a transparent background. Pretty handy. I think placing your product in different situations can get really expensive, but you can do this with ChatGPT. Let's try and place this product here. Let's say in the back of a person walking into a beach where I think this Yeti cooler might be used, right? I'm going to just copy the image in a brand new chat and the more images you can provide the chat, the better. It's that old saying of the quality of the input increases the quality of the output by putting more images in there. You're giving more reference images to ChatGPT to be able to use. I'm gonna copy a couple here and give it to ChatGPT. Now I'm gonna say, place this product in the back of a male without a shirt. He's walking into the beach, he's wearing a cap and we see the backpack, Yeti backpack on him. And now in a matter of minutes, we see our product that could honestly be used in a catalog. That's a pretty spot on image. I can't really tell if that's how big or small the pack actually is. I don't have it on me, but I would think that is pretty good for any type of photo shoot. I like it. Now, finally, one of the things that I find myself using GPT images the most is for ideas for YouTube thumbnails. You'll see through my channel that uh, I often use a lot of the techniques that I've just showed you today, particularly the transparent stuff, but how do I even begin to generate YouTube thumbnails? Well, I think the first thing that you need is some sort of script or something outlining the video. This one is the video for this, for example. I've clicked, I've already detailed everything. I'm going to download this as a text file. And you wanna take a bit of a step-by-step -step approach. You don't just want it to give you the image for the thumbnail right away, but you wanna brainstorm a couple of ideas so you can see which one might be best. And the idea to understand is that YouTube isn't for a creator anyway, it's not really a video platform, it's a packaging platform. So with that said, what you wanna say is, here I'm going to give you the text file for a YouTube video. I want you to understand it and give me four potential ideas for a thumbnail. Just give me the description of the thumbnails. So what we're asking you to do is to understand the topic at hand and just give us a few ideas that we can start working with in the beginning. I like to use this alongside Canva or any other image editing software. You've got a little bit more control. Perfect, so it's got here before and after, left side, messy, unimpressive product with an X over it, right side, clean, bold product. Um, that's not too bad. 3D image, shocked face, expression. Uh, so now let's try and build out number one, right? So let's go, let's describe image number one in more detail. Please, so I'm getting into, okay, let's flesh out this idea a little bit more. Okay, so I like this. I might just not get it to mention the overlay. So I'm going to ask it, uh, great, now I generate the image, but leave the text overlay out. That might be something that I push, put in post. And here's our first mock-up. Now, this isn't the best, I'm gonna be very honest, but it's not the idea for it to create the whole thumbnail. The idea is for it to give you a visual representation, which then you can use different elements to use in your thumbnail. I guess that's how I always use it. I then go into Canva and actually build this thing myself, but I'm a bit more of a visual person. I need to see what this is going to look like and now this makes perfect sense for me. And that's the second iteration, not bad, but I get the idea of what I need to do. I can separate the elements and generate this in Canva. So again, here's a tool that you can generate an image by reverse engineering it so you get the a very similar tone and style. You can edit the image directly within the application, generate 3D objects with a transparent background and even get it to help you create thumbnails. Now, 
you saw that sometimes whilst it's really good, it's not the best. So whilst I recommend you learn how to use this tool to its full advantage, sometimes we do need an AI model that was just generated for images. And one of my favorites, very inexpensive, it's a pay-as-you-go model, is Flux. And I've done a detailed tutorial on how to use this tool completely so that if and only if ChatGPT doesn't quite meet the needs that you want, you should try Flux out. This is the ultimate image generator tool.